This Mercedes front grille star is 28 centimeters in diameter. Pretty big for a normal car. Well, it's not a normal car here. Well, this is a city bus. It's a new Mercedes e Citaro. And why are we showing you this one here on Autogefühl? Well, because this one here will probably change the way urban mobility will look like. An electric city bus. What's about it? All the details here on Autogefühl, your number one resource for in-depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars. Today with technology and probably a small revolution in the modern urban transport. Let's go! Citaro takes over design elements from the so-called future bus that was a concept that was shown last year. So we got a very wide windscreen here in an oval form, also transparent elements in the lower area and the E Citaro logo right there. Citaro is the general city bus line by Mercedes or Daimler. It's been sold over 50,000 times and that's you know really a lot for those big city buses and the e Citaro now supposed to be able to take over one third of all the current combustion engine city buses or one third of all the lines that are running and that is due to the range we will soon talk about. This one here is most definitely full HD, full screen and full length because it's about 12 meters or just below 40 foot a normal city bus length and it has basically the same building style and the platform than the normal Citaro combustion engine city bus. But then of course special features are being added. You see we have two axles and on both axles there's an electric motor with about 170 horsepower each for the power and of course also for possible recuperation when you hit the brakes. And it looks a little bit like a travel bus because of the roof structure in the top part. And the reason is of those 10 battery modules, overall 243 kilowatt hours. Remember, a Tesla has about 100 kilowatt hours in the top spec, just for you know size comparison. At least four modules. Uh, those four modules are in the rear, where the normal engine would be sitting, and then up to six models. You don't have to take all, depending on price and range, but up to six more mo modules are in the roof structure also with the cooling for the battery and then you get overall 10 modules then and you got an equal weight distribution and overall range in you know at least 150 kilometers or up to 250 kilometers in best conditions and for charging see also on the door side of the bus you can put the dc plug and depending on how strong your dc station is it takes about one and a half hour to three hours to recharge it from zero to full. So then if we take an average of let's say just you know 200 kilometers that's then 125 miles and that's the reason why Daimler says one third of the current routes could all be taken over from this one here now from the electric version without recharging during the day then recharging at night for example with a combo two plug with a DC charger and then you can also you know have enough time to recharge the bus at night when it just would be standing still here again in the rear where the normal combustion engine would sit the base models of the batteries are placed here and also some other technology compartments and it will even get more interesting in the interior of this bus because the question is let's say it's really cold outside minus 10 degrees usually the range would be cut in half but they actually found a strategy to prevent that
And now let's take you guys on the tour of the interior. Basically, the interior will be the same for the other Citaro models. This one here, the E-Citaro, also introduces a facelift for the whole model range. And, well, some things will be different, first of all. This is the entry to the driver's seat. Sadly, I'm not allowed to drive this vehicle because I have a lot of driver's license. You can see here the, you know, the air suspension for the seat. So a pretty comfortable seat, that's for sure. And of course, I mean, if you're sitting all day in this bus, it has to be. So I'm not allowed because I don't have the driver's license for a bus. Special one needed for that, for sure. And you can see if here, for example, drive, neutral and reverse gear. So pretty simple. And the only thing that are different here, those gauges where you can see, you know, the battery power, and also then not only speed but also then you know when the car is recuperating for example when you lift the throttle normally it just rolls which is more efficient and it's a very important point a city bus can use the rolling power better because it doesn't get to so much higher speeds and it's also predictable as a bus driver i would know this is a station there there i can better roll there i need to step on the brakes earlier with the passenger car ev you have more situations where you're a little bit, you know, more fluctuating. You're a little bit faster, then need the recuperation again. However, you can still recuperate with this bus here. Just use the brakes, then first the recuperation is being used until you need even more braking power and you need the real brakes. And there's also a special lever where you can set recuperation modes in when you're running down a hill for a longer time, for example. And let's continue with the passenger compartment. Maximum of 88 people can drive with this bus plus the driver but 88 people in here that might get a little bit crowded but that's just the maximum figure and you know stop a button here if you want to stop at the next stop then we have nice auto fuel proof fabric seats <laughs> and not to sweat in summer and to stay warm in winter you might wonder why are they using those pretty crazy structure in the bus as well if you use such design here, then you don't see stains that easily, for example. That's the simple reason behind it. Also, you can get this vehicle here with over 13 USB plugs that passengers can recharge their phones while driving, for example, like this. Um, I would love to see that in a, in a normal city bus. That would be pretty cool, I think. So, here we go. Schmoozy is reloading. <laughs> I mean, I'm not really sure if all of the um, public uh, transport services will order that option, but I hope some do for your service for sure. And by the way, I mean, you sit like in a normal bus, the interior won't be that different. The only thing is just because I've already been driving um, you know, a few rounds, it's also more silent for you because the area where an electric vehicle is more silent are just the low speed areas. If you get, you know, above 30, 40, 50 kilometers, then the rolling sound of the tires will be more noisy. And here you can get the noise reduction at the low level. And talking about noise reduction, well, you can also see that ceiling here. And this has been newly designed that everything is, you know, with less different elements. For example, here everything is more integrated and smooth and this also brings down the noise level overall of the bus. And just across on the other side, there's a 29 inch screen available where you can see the next stops, for example, also with a good resolution, pretty fancy as well. If we continue on further then to the rear, you can see here those, you know, typically seat set up where you can have the also adaptive seats, maybe then, you know, a child carriage or at some point maybe, for example, a bicycle or so. You can hold on here as well for the standing seats. And if we go to the rear part, there's also a version at the moment, this one here with two doors for the passengers. There's also a version with a third door for the passengers right here. It would be a little bit lower then and a little bit less seats, but then a third door here as well. And, you know, the cool kids are always sitting in the back. And in this case here, as usual, the combustion engine would be just right under me. You might remember that from my childhood. That it would get really warm here in the rear. That won't be the case in this one because it's just a battery. Yeah, well, the battery is also getting warm at some point, but not as warm as the combustion engines. And 
talking about warmth, the thermal management of this vehicle is basically the key to a rate to the um, you know to the real range because that earlier usually the range would be cut in half if you think about heating, ventilation, and cooling, and you think about you know in winter times the doors are opening, closing again. While opening, you know, all the warm air gets out, for example, or when it's really hot in summertime, and therefore they optimize the thermal management. For example, if there are a lot of people in the bus, the axles are actually realizing, whoa, there's more weight on the axle, and then the bus adapts. For example, say, so yeah, a lot of people in here, and so we put down the heating a little bit because the people themselves are also heating up the bus. And when there's less people inside, then there's more heating. Then it's, for example, also where the heating stuff is being placed. So it's a very intelligent and clever system. And by that, all of the energy consumption could be brought down 40% of the heating, cooling, ventilation system. And therefore, the range will relatively remain the same, Daimler promises, also in extrema temperature conditions. So, and let's now begin our ride here. You might wonder, an electric bus is actually very powerful and you know it from electric vehicles, from the passenger cars, that they are actually pretty fast as well. And just from technology, this bus would also be able to drive really fast, to accelerate really fast. But they have actually reduced the amount of torque when starting it, you know, when sitting here and maybe some, some people are standing. And so it's reduced just a little bit in the acceleration that it's not too fast, actually. So they tried out, which is basically, um, you know, a pleasing speed, a pleasing acceleration speed that you don't get thrown all over the bus. And so the bus driver cannot exceed this speed then, um, this acceleration speed. Of course, it's also important for the so-called TCO, the total cost of ownership. They should be kept down because this bus will, of course, be more expensive than the normal version. But over the overall lower total cost of ownership, you can maybe even out this price difference for that then. And, you know, driving here feels pretty much the same like a normal bus, like a normal combustion engine bus. It's just you feel that when it's accelerating, especially when it's standing still, stopping and going again, then it's really more silent and somehow also a little bit more relaxing. As soon as you're driving now, about you know 50 kilometers an hour or something, then you don't feel any difference anymore. But of course, for the rear passengers, it will be even more important because the combustion and it would be in the rear in the other version that is especially louder there. So overall, I think it's for the passenger a more positive experience to sit here with the electric version. But the biggest difference will actually for the people outside because they won't get the fumes and also won't get the noise. That's about it riding. Well, as I said, I'm not allowed to drive this bus, but I know someone who can, because Jonas Steinke is the test manager here for the eCitaro. So tell me, how does it feel? How is it different as a bus driver then from driving a normal combustion engine city bus? Yeah, so first of all, um, the dashboard is almost the same as in a conventional bus. So you have the same um, velocity gauge and uh, you have the same uh, DNR uh, like in a, a DNR um, buttons like in a conventional bus. Uh, one thing is new, it is the power meter instead of the RPM gauge. And regarding the feeling, well, it's much more comfortable because uh, you don't have these um, interruptions when the gear is changed. Uh, so you, you have a smooth acceleration and uh, the acceleration is really powerful and um, 
One thing uh, I would like to tell you is the coasting function in our bus. Um, the coasting function is if you uh, um, reach a certain velocity, say 50 kilometers uh, per hour, uh, and you release then the gas pedal, we have the coasting function, means the bus just coasts. And um, this is the most efficient way um, to drive because we use the kinetic energy. Um, this is a quite new feeling to drive. And uh, I imagine for some bus drivers uh, a challenge in the first two days, but then they will love it. So would you need to re-educate a driver for this bus or isn't it not needed? I would say uh, overall no, um, because the, the dashboard is familiar from the, from the conventional bus. But of course, um, uh, sensibility of the high voltage system uh, should be given to the bus drivers, that they know uh, the main functions of the bus. Thank you so much for the insight. You're welcome. And now to our conclusion for today with the Mercedes E Citaro. Well, it's a very interesting concept and the funny thing is, or the good thing, it's not a concept anymore, <laughs> not a concept vehicle. This is real. This is a series production vehicle and it already looks like, like a one. A little bit more futuristic than a normal city bus, but from the inside everything looks pretty much normal and, you know, just may maybe a little bit more modern due to this recent phase that they are taking then with the electric version. And the concept also of the range figures, I think it's really enough to fit for the most bus routes. And later on, it's also possible when, for example, new battery developments are coming, that you can actually replace them. You know, taking the new batteries with more range and then put them in so they have laid it out as a modular concept that they can always be removed and new ones can be put in. So this is basically then also future proof. And later on when we can get more range in those city buses and probably all of the city bus routes can be taken over by electric vehicles. You know there are already ones today, for example with the pantograph on the top, um, that there is an you know, external connection to the grid for example. In Salzburg I've seen some. But this one here, of course, has more use case because you don't need a special infrastructure than on the streets. You just need the charging infrastructure. That's the main thing. But when customers order this one here, they can also get basically a service package that also the infrastructure will be done. In general, I think electric city buses is a very good use case for electric vehicles overall because you have those stop and go, stop and go, stop and go. And then, of course, you have less noise inside the cities because those combustion engine city, city buses are pretty noisy over and of course if you think about local emissions in the city. What do you think? I hope you liked this technology insight. The actual real technology is the thermal management that the range is not being decreased significantly by the outside temperatures. This is you know the interesting tech piece here for today. What do you think about electric city buses? Tell me your opinion. I hope you like this special auto fuel feature for today and also tune in next time.